All right, adjusting your blade pitch to zero. Now, I think that's one of my problems. I think that's why my heli is pulling to the right a little bit on takeoff. I don't know if the gyro thinks that maybe something's off. Um, I found a couple of videos on YouTube, uh, and I just liked one today, which was pretty cool, where someone used uh, for a fly barless helicopter. They had several examples, uh, one being this little, this little pit where you kind of screw it into the top of the heli and then you would use um, a couple of small rods like this and then you're able to do the uh, you place it in the center and you're kind of I mean once it's screwed in I'm just gonna place it there for for visual sake but once it's screwed in you kind of use it um, like the old school way where you get the um, the uh, pitch gauge and kind of you know line aside there and adjust it eyeball it um, then there was the uh, the bubble method where you kind of get one of your little bubble things uh, line up the uh, the table that it's in line up the heli uh, and then kind of use the bubble with the uh, pitch gauge and adjust the pitch so I want to take it to a step further because the bubbles are great but they're not perfect and they're not exact so a couple of things I noticed is that I actually created a perfect level surface here by slightly padding and adjusting and moving uh, till I got the center of the bubble. Then I went ahead and put another bubble on the on the uh, the heli in the back. Let me see. Turn on the flashlight. Maybe you can't see it. It's so dark right there. And then I got the heli perfectly centered. Now in order for me to get the heli perfectly centered, I actually had to raise these little wheels a little bit. Uh, this. Um, the landing skid on this side so I'm wondering if my landing skid is off or is a little crooked then it's not I'm not perfectly leveled on the ground which is not a big deal I mean it's a slightly off but just in case I might adjust that so going back to what I started taking it a step further I actually found this there's a Johnson pitch and slope locator this is actually designed to use with um, roofs and driveways and things like that and I went ahead and I uh, connected it uh, via velcro to uh, uh, the, the regular fly bar um, pitch gauge um, it is the smallest one I found I think I got it at Home Depot so if anybody else finds a smaller one out there it's pretty neat is a lot more um, precise than the bubbles you know so like I said I attached it here via velcro I set this to zero so now I can clip it and put it on the blade itself so I used several um, bubble um, to to uh, make sure that the settings were correct. And let me go ahead and clip this on right here. Now, I have not turned on the transmitter yet, so my blades are not perfectly zero. But I kind of wanted to show you what how it'll work once it's connected. You see here, this blade is actually slightly off, but that's normal because the um, the radio is off and the receiver's not going perfectly so uh, zero so I'm gonna go ahead in a little bit crank it on and then start doing my adjustments uh, based on this so I'll just carefully align my blade to the heli make sure the heli is completely leveled and with this pitch gauge pitch and slope locator I'll get to zero on both sides um, and hopefully that'll fix the uh, the pull to the right that I'm having and um, well, Hopefully this helps some someone else out there that um, You know trying to use something. It's pretty light. I prefer if you know, there's a smaller one out there, but it's pretty cool and it's better than the uh, The cell phone um, one. I don't know how accurate the cell phone one is But this your cell phone is gonna be much much heavier to use and it's gonna be bulkier and you have to kind of hang it in the bottom uh, and depending on the space you have if you're on a 450 or 400 that might not work too well that might just work for like the fives and the um, um, and the sixes on up um, so this might work great for the smaller ones this might work great for the 400s and the 450s um, so to, to adjust or maybe even smaller I don't know if anybody else gives it a whirl let me know so I'm gonna run my tests uh, once I'm done I'm gonna verify my my findings with the uh, bubble method and I'm gonna also find uh, verify it with the old-school method with the pins um, and just um, just the um, the pitch gauge by itself and see I'll let you know how it works all 
All right, my um, my radio's on. I have my throttle hold on, and I have my radio at zero pitch. And it's the first blade, and it looks good. It's right there. I mean, it's pretty close to zero, so I don't think the blade was a problem. It looks fine there. I'm gonna go ahead and now remove this, flip the blade around, and then try the opposite side. Yeah, the servos kicking in like no working hard okay all right get the opposite blade up all right we'll do the same clip it in carefully Give it a second. Yeah, so it's not my pitch. My blades are fine. My blades are zero on both. They're identical. Good. Well, at least we know this works. And again, I have... Oh, I fell down here. Let me carefully bring it up. Uh, my heli's dead center. The box is dead center. And my pitch and slope. It's dead center, so, and my radio says, hey, zero. Awesome. So, let's actually remove this. And so I guess the pull to the left, to the right that I'm having must be something else. Uh, I don't know. So, pitch is working fine, see? This way, this way. There you go. Anking good, forward and backwards good, everything's good, huh, all right, let me go ahead and put these little flaps to sleep, all the way down, all right, and then let me carefully, this is all the way down, switch back the, uh, throw the hold back to on again, so my blazer, Back to normal negative 16 degrees is what I use for takeoff. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and kill the power. All right. And turn off my radio. All right. So the problem is not the pitch. Um, that's kind of good news. I didn't have to sit there and adjust it now. Process of elimination, I got to keep going and figure out why this bird is pulling to the right so much. Um, I did notice that I had to raise the legs a little bit, like I said before. So, I don't think that it's throwing off the gyro. Maybe, you know, something I can do is turn off the gyro completely and just manually take off and see if, uh, if it's the gyro trying to overcompensate. Then I just have to adjust the gyro itself. So, that might be a good test. So I'm going to crank it up tomorrow. I'm going to... Try it again, just fly it normal. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and just completely turn off the gyro altogether, disable it, and take off without it, and see if it's just the gyro trying to overcompensate. All right, and you know what I'll do? That's what I'll do. I'll set it where the gyro won't kick in till like I'm about 75%. So, cause right now I got it uh, kicking in at 50%. So I got hover on at 50%, and then that's where the gyro, the gyro is about. Um, about eighty percent of the uh, of the stability is coming out of the gyro, out of the six axis gyro. So, what I do is I'll make sure that the hovers off, all the way to about seventy five percent. Then I'll let the gyro kick in. Um, till then, I'll just uh, let it run manual. Uh, maybe it won't try to overcompensate uh, from the ground up. All right, cool. Well, it worked. Hey, new invention, yay! Or old invention reinvented. <laughs>